in time. Um, as you are aware, uh, one of the key points, one of the most important actions of uh, Rotary is health. And that's why we are here today. Over this uh, last few months, this year that has gone by, um, our club has, uh, has done uh, projects related to health. Um, we have uh, um, made the donation to help uh, Rotary Clubs in Mongolia to uh, face the threat of uh, uh, the virus in Mongolia. Um, we have um, made the donation of uh, diapers and uh, baby milk to Caritas to be distributed among um, migrant workers, women migrant workers who just had their newborn babies and they were unemployed and unable to go back to their uh, original country. So we worked with Caritas to provide um, assistance uh, in terms of uh, uh, feeding those, uh, those babies. Previously, we also um, uh, made donations to Hong Kong to buy uh, face masks in Hong Kong in a period in which um, in Macau we could buy face masks, but in Hong Kong face masks were not available. So we have, uh, we have done our fair share um, of projects regarding um, the pandemic. There's much more we, we need to do uh, because this is not going away as we can uh, understand so soon. Um, and we, uh, we just had the news that uh, exactly um, on the first anniversary of the first case, and after seven months uh, without any new cases of COVID, we just had um, uh, one confirmed case uh, last night arriving uh, from, uh, from, uh, from abroad. Fortunately, there has been no community transmission in Macau, and I think this is um, a reason for us to be healthy, uh, but still to ensure that uh, we keep up the prevention measures. This seminar is only possible because uh, um, the Rui Cunha Foundation has allowed us to be here. And I would like to personally thank uh, Dr. Rui Cunha, who is here with us. And um, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Macau, I would like to present you with a, a token of appreciation. <laughs> this is our club banner. Um, and thank you so much for allowing us to be here today uh, talking about such an important uh, topic for Macau. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for the foundation is always, we are glad to cooperate with all institutions here in Macau, and in special uh, on this case with an institution like the Rotary Club that is a meaningful association here in Macau for what you are doing and uh, in some way pursuing uh, the same objective that we have on our foundation, is to serve Macau, to serve people, to give to everyone some chance to have a better life, a better environment, and uh, is our cooperation with you. Uh, we will uh, praise that in the future many other things that we can do it together because we are on the same path, let's pursue, let's go, and let's, uh, at the end, we feel that we uh, fulfill our objective. Thank you for it, and this is a very meaningful for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, on my right-hand side, we have our panel. Um, I'll just make a brief introduction of our panel. Uh, we have um, uh, right next to me uh, past president Elvo So of the Rotary Club of Macau. He is here in his capacity as uh, psychotherapist. We have then uh, Fatima Sanchez Ferreira, um, uh, who is also a past president of the Rotary Club of Macau and is here in her capacity as a social worker at Fu Hong and uh, the person who was uh, very much behind the idea of Fu Hong creating Fu Hong to help people with special needs. We have Augusto Nogueira, he is the president of uh, uh, the Macau Drug Rehabilitation uh, Association, who has been doing uh, over the last two decades uh, a very meaningful work uh, towards people with addiction. And our moderator um, this, um, this evening is José Carlos Matias, a colleague, a journalist, and uh, a very experienced moderator. I would like to invite José Carlos Matias and Augusto Nogueira to join me here so that I can uh, also offer you a token of our appreciation on behalf of the Rotary Club of Macau. 
Ah, os dois. Os dois. Okay. Deus, muito obrigado. Obrigado, obrigado. 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 Já sou para aqui assim para este lado. Obrigado. Ah, sim, 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 sim. So, thank you both of you. I will okay. not take more time uh, because uh, you guys have the important things to say. <laughs> so, let's have a seat thank and you. let's start this seminar. Zé Carlos. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. Let's do it. Yes, Dr. Felipe Pinha, if you could join us for a group photo. <coughs> flex screen, flex screen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, João. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Um, Thank you very much for joining us here, and also to those of, uh, of you uh, following us uh, on Facebook. Uh, warmest regards. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Rotary Club of Macau, João Francisco Pinto, for the invitation and, and the club for um, jointly organizing, of course. Thank you also to Rui Cunha Foundation, uh, Dr. Rui Cunha, as always, and also uh, Filipe Guadalupe and the whole team. Um, as I always say, it, it really feels, uh, well, it feels good being here, uh, makes us feel at home, um, and uh, highlights how special uh, this foundation is, and also how special Macau is. By being, of course, the Macau special administrative region, but also, in many ways, uh, we, are, we are in a situation that is uh, one of a kind uh, when it comes to the the ongoing uh, unprecedented uh, pandemic situation that we've been going through, that we've been enduring. Um, today marks the first anniversary of the first case reported in Macau, as João was, was highlighting. And what a coincidence that also today we had, just last night, um, uh, in the early hours of the day, uh, the news about the 47th case uh, after uh, a remarkable period of uh, uh, about almost seven months without a single uh, case uh, here, um, here in Macau. Um, so also these uh, highlights and uh, uh, stresses the fact that we can be here physically. There was a time in the early uh, stages of the pandemic where we couldn't do this. So, um, but uh, we managed to uh, bypass that by using Zoom and other technologies. Now we can be both physically here and also um, online. So without further delay, of course, uh, we are uh, here to talk about uh, what we've learned, uh, what we've experienced uh, so far over these 365 days. And, and through the lens of people who've been dealing with those, um, uh, with people who um, are in a particular situation or particularly affected, um, so um, the issue of uh, the heavy toll on mental health and how those who are from more vulnerable groups, um, um, how they're been coping with this and how uh, social organizations, social service organizations, and also uh, someone who uh, was ex an experienced psychotherapist uh, been dealing with them, so we're gonna learn and also, uh, I also like us to have a bit of a forward-looking perspective towards the end of our of our talk. Without further delay, I would uh, start by asking um, Fatima uh, Santos Ferreira. She's the president of the General Assembly of Full Home Society, a social service, non-profit social service organization, uh, who's been playing a, a key role over the years. Um, and I'd like uh, Fatima to share with us. Uh, where we we weren't prepared for this, right? And how um, how have uh, you managed to cope with all these challenges when the, the outbreak started and and uh, throughout over these months? 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for One Society of Macau is a non-profit mm -hmm. social service organization founded by a group of volunteers in May 2003. At present, operates 12 units, mainly provide service to people with disability, autists, person and people with mental illness to learn more skills and knowledge so that they can realize sufficient growth and all physical and spiritual aspects. These are all the, uh, the different centers that we, or, or different units that we already have. No. Well, the psychological impact during the pandemic has brought an unprecedented challenge. The fast spreading of the infection disease causing universal awareness, anxiety, and distress in the community. The mental well-being has been heavily affected by this global pandemic. The outreach service, we, because the, all the centers were closed in February for more than six months. And during that time, our staff remain at work. And what they do, they call uh, out all the service users to see how they are going how they are feeling, and also we have uh, a domiciliary visit to those who are living alone to see how they can cope with this uh, pandemic by themselves and giving them support because they cannot go to the center. We are uh, close and then we hope that with this attitude we can share the, the, and relief their mental stress caused by the epidemic and also provide them assistance and hoping to protect their physical and mental health during this time. And we also use the online platform. Myself, we did not use so much computer, internet, like this time of the year. And we have, uh, like in the Epi Heart Studio, the, the first one, Epi Heart Studio, we have uh, changed to online teaching and teach small groups of the kids. We can teach them uh, music and everything. And on the Honing Center, is for those who are more heavily uh, disabled. Uh, we have small, make small films that are easily understood by those group of people. They can pass on Facebook, they can see. And also the, the staff make some works to teach them how to wash their hands. One of the things they, they can learn is if they sing the happy birthday song, it's 20 seconds. So they will take 20 seconds to wash their hands, then it's okay. <laughs> and also uh, the Fuhong uh, live, live show. Uh, during the Mother's Day, we organize a live show concert and every body in Macau can follow the concert through Facebook or YouTube. And we have uh, different artists in Macau that participate on this event. It's the, to give praise to the mothers of Macau to the, for their support and this different occasion. Here you can see 
different uh, photos about the online teaching and the drum class and the, in the middle, see? The drawing of the hands to teach them how to wash the hands. And the last one is a picture of the live concert. Macau community, the people are very solidarity. And on that period of time, it was difficult and, and expensive to get uh, washing hands uh, material, gels and everything. So many uh, organizations did offer, and individual did offer masks and those things to Fuhong and they give all to the Bole Center, and on that we can just divide it by all the service users for them to use. Yeah. And also, during the consumer uh, card distribution, we teach them where they can get the card and how to, to use it, especially for those who are living alone, have no uh, family members, to help them and go with them also to, to buy things that they needed. It's a different picture that all the support we did receive from the community. One of the sections we have from the um, readers of Macau Daily News and uh, some gaming organization, they offer us some um, temperature machine because when the center is open, you need to take temperature of everyone who got in the center and you have to have one or two staff for this. With that machine, you just have the machine to do it and you don't need to put somebody there to take the temperature. And if your temperature is higher than is uh, suitable, then the machine will jump and have a sound and you know already mm. that that person has some problem. <laughs> and this is our different pictures of all the supports we did receive from the community. And not only from the, the we have uh, in the happy, happy, happy market uh, social enterprise, there are uh, two slogan, two uh, posters to invite the, the people, different groups of people to give things. Not, this is not to Fuhong, but it's to go to, to the happy market. And it is to go for the families who have needed go there to buy the things. Those families who are receiving subsidy from the welfare department are allowed to buy those things. And the price are very low, and they can be helped on that period of time because some have no job, some has difficulty on the employment and everything. And we also have uh, help from the also from the president of the uh, Rehabilitation International and the chairs of China Disabled Person Federation. She wrote a, a, a letter and sent some masks for the service user and congratulations all the, the support that uh, the staff in front line are doing. We have one center, it's a residential care that cannot close because it's 24 hours of work. They are living there. Those uh, service user did, was not sent back home. They still stay there. So, but they cannot have a family visit. So 
we, we teach them to use FaceTime, and then they can contact their family and have support mm -hmm. because they don't understand why suddenly nobody comes to see them visit. And this is a, a, a very stressed situation for them. We have one case that the, the sister has to go to hospital and could not take care of the brother. So he went to the residential care and he was very angry with the sister when he saw her again. He did not want to talk to her because to not understand why he is there and the sister do not care. So we, to avoid this kind of situation, we help them and the family to get in touch through uh, iPads, computer, telephone, FaceTime, so they can have uh, in interrelation with them and everything. And also, some volunteers also do this kind of job. If in case the family cannot, do it, then the volunteers can. They, they need to to feel supported. And on that time, we also have some. Um, some works inside the, the center to teach them environmental cleaning. So they will see on the middle, they will learn to clean the, the space and everything to, to, to have a, a not nice environmental and everything. This is a, a very work of those group of people, of the staff. Our staff continue to work, and they also have a psychological situation of because of the pandemic. So we also have to be aware of those situations and give support. At that time, we make visits. We pay visits to different centers to carry to the staff because they, they need to, to know that they are not alone in this uh, kind of matter. They need to be, they need to feel supported and everything. And we also use this time of the, to, to make internal training. We have uh, uh, organized uh, peer support training for the staff, because we would like to have in Macau the peer support group. We have, can choose from the uh, service user that we have from the center, that is uh, from the, those who come in from hospital, so the mental ill patient in rehabilitation. We can want to choose from those group, those who are able to be on the future a peer support and they can have work as a peer support and because it's very important we believe that this is a, a way of giving support to those who are in this situation of the mental ill patients sometimes the society still do not accept them well so they have enfranting two problems, the pandemic and the, the, the mental illness support. And we have to also tell the staff how to manage anxiety, how to manage the panic, because the, okay, Jojo, go back. Yeah. They, they, they need to, 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 to know that they have to find support from outside if they cannot do it by themselves. They need to sleep well, they need to rest. This is a very way to go. And seeking support if uh, struggling with anxiety and pandemic attack, make sure they they can seek adequate help. 
And finally, you, we hope that this pandemic this year will leave us this fight and we can have a stay safe and healthy in the 2021 year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fatima. Uh, thank you very much. Very, really interesting and uh, um, eye-opening uh, presentation that uh, allows us to, well, have at least uh, some uh, basic understanding of the challenges that um, have piled up uh, over over this year. And um, and this, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, several aspects here that are, that, uh, are worth delving into. Um, uh, Elvo, um, mental health, well, um, obviously the ongoing pandemic has taken a heavy toll on the mental health of, of, of the whole society, or the societies, yeah. let alone in cases like uh, uh, the cases of the people that um, are uh, receiving the support of a, a full home society or the association of rehabilitation of drug abusers. Um, so they are probably squeezed in, 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 by both uh, the overall problem of the mental health posed by the pandemic to all citizens, nearly at least some pressure, and then uh, their own condition. Um, what is your view on what, what's been going on over this year? Um, and uh, what have we learned so far in this respect? Okay, so um, um, first of all, I'm very thankful to be able here to, to share some of my uh, observation, uh, just to give a perspective of uh, uh, the overall impact of COVID. As of right now, we have actually globally almost uh, 100,000 confirmed cases, and over 2 million people actually passed away because of the COVID. Now, uh, that, sounds just like a number. But if we actually live in a place where a lot of people, they were sick, they passed away, but without a proper kind of a, um, uh, uh, arrangement, all right, that could be a collective uh, trauma, right? Fortunately, in Macau, we are very safe, so we do not have that level of impact. But at the same time, I do think that uh, 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 Macau, even though we have been uh, safeguarding the society so well, the psychological impact nonetheless is there, especially uh, for those who have pre-existing conditions. Okay, so anxiety, all right? Uh, let me just uh, name it as the most uh, prevalent uh, concern, all right? Uh, anxiety as a disorder itself is quite uh, pervasive in modern days, in Macau as well, and uh, certainly the COVID-19 has heightened the level of anxiety for everybody. For us, average individuals, and ex uh, especially for people who already have pre-existing conditions. And uh, let me share one particular um, group of uh, anxiety disorder that is uh, called the obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's somebody who have these uh, obsessive thoughts about um, keeping away from germs, all right? and then have this compulsion of uh, keeping myself clean, like washing my hands, like so many times. Now, in an everyday life, the uh, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, already is a very struggling condition for people who have this uh, uh, situation. It affects their social life, it affects their uh, functional life as well. And now, all of a sudden, everybody we talk about like uh, keeping yourself clean, keeping yourself very hygienic, you know, the level of hand washing, you cannot just imagine, right? So I'm just putting it as an example how the COVID can actually exacerbate the pre-existing conditions for those who have mental illness, yes. We will, we will revisit that uh, to further, uh, to follow up on that. I'm now bringing Augusto, uh, thank you, Elvo, for, for, for uh, bringing this to our attention. Um, uh, I'll bring uh, Augusto to Nuker into, into the, bring you into the conversation. He's the president of the Association of, uh, for Rehabilitation of Drug Abusers in Macau. I believe that when we were taking note of uh, what mm -hmm. uh, Fatima was uh, sharing with us uh, and also what, uh, what, um, what Elvo was uh, 
also addressing in your association. I believe you've been dealing over this year uh, with a number of challenges. Can you please share with us uh, how was it back then when we had the outbreak? How about the adaptation uh, uh, with regards to um, the services you provide and also the kinds of problems that emerged throughout the year? Okay, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, uh, well, uh, as you know, at ARTM we have several departments, but uh, for us there are three departments that are very crucial that we keep, uh, at the same time we protect ourselves and protect the, the service users, but we, 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 should, we, we have to continue with, with, the, with the service. Uh, one of them very, very important for us was the, the, out, the harm reduction department, the outreach where we provided the needle syringe program, and that for us was, was very important, something that we knew since the beginning, together with the social affair, that I think we also need to praise the social affair for all the cooperation and uh, on the development of all the guidelines. Uh, but we, we knew that one could not, could not close. We have to continue providing the syringe to the people. And that was a challenge because uh, at the same time we need staff there to do that, do that job, but at the same time we could not allow them to, to enter our, our, our department. So we reduce the staff in that moment and we keep giving the syringe and uh, the meals because that was very important because they have two the aftercare uh, uh, clients, they have to go to the needle syringe program to get their meals and, and also the, 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 the current drug users, they also could continue getting their, their meals. So it was very uh, brave for my staff at that time to going to work out alternative. Uh, but uh, that was a challenge for us because if we stop that program, so other, pro other problems, problems could happen like the HIV sharing or hepatitis C. So that was very crucial for us. The, the aftercare department was very important as well uh, because many of the, where we give follow up to the people under uh, probation and uh, the probation, so they, are, they, they need to continue doing the urine tests and all these counseling sessions, but we have to be close. Uh, so we, we, as uh, Fatima also did, we have all, we continue with our calls and the online calls to so we keep the contact with them, because also at the same time the social affair decide to uh, to not make the urine tests. So we felt that could be a, a possibility of of some of them. Okay, I don't need to make urine tests, so I can uh, you know resume or use drugs once a while. So that was very important to not happen because if uh, accused in some in the future in this, uh, in the same urine test that they could face uh, serious situations on the court. So we have to c c keep the calls and the face time to keep uh, close to them, so uh, to make sure that they will not make any any any, mis any, any mistake. And then in the treatment in the in the treatment center, I mean, there uh, was a lot of adaptations that we have we have to face. And, uh, lucky because I think. Most part of our staff, we already face the SARS as well, so we already have some kind of uh, experience and uh, we didn't take so hard on this. Uh, but, uh, and most part of the people that are in the treatment center, they are uh, people with 50s or 40s, 30s, but they, they are drug use, so they have a kind of a independent life, let's say. So we didn't have any many situations of facing of anxiety or for them they want to go home or some some of them they tried to get some excuse so they could leave but that it, we knew that they could not go anywhere but um, but it was kind of adaptation that we need to have at that time uh, mm -hmm. to uh, reduce the staff to uh, all the, the, those uh, measures that we have to have for the, the temperature etc uh, but uh, but in terms of the the, the, the clients, the service users themselves, uh, I, we didn't felt any kind of uh, anxiety from them or any kind of anger because they were need to be there in the center because actually they are already there, uh, and so those ones that in, they are they have entitled to go spend weekends at home, uh, they understood very well they could not go, so we have face time for them and those ones they have the families in China, we also have the face time to them. So we try to adapt ourselves, and the important thing for them is that they knew that we staff, we also having the same measures. We also, I mean, were, have a lot of restrictions on ourselves. So we didn't, they didn't feel that oh, these guys are having different things and we are. 
But, uh, but uh, when I start to compare um, uh, about this COVID between the, uh, Macau and many other countries, I can see that the, the and because we are talking about the drug users, they are the most vulnerable. So we, I can see that the many other places they, they stop with the methadone, uh, providing methadone and providing a needle syringe program, they will stop. So they felt a lot of uh, restrictions and, and uh, lack of support. And I think that one thing that uh, in Macau, uh, we RTM and also in cooperation with the social fair, that we keep in mind that uh, this vulnerable group could not stop, could not feel any lack of support. And I think that uh, was the, the, the main challenge and all that adaptation to the rules and the, 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 the close of the activities and, and the Dr. Fatima knows to review all the budgets afterwards because we have some cut budgets, so we have to review all the activities and, uh, and at some time to accomplish with the main activities. So, yeah, challenge. But uh, for us, someone that we were in drugs, we, we face that. <laughs> In terms of uh, addiction, um, has the problem uh, in terms of the, the, the behavior and the level of addiction, uh, how, 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 how has the situation evolved? I mean, was it more serious or the issue of anxiety with regards to, in the case from what you have learned um, among uh, drug mm -hmm. users in Macau in terms of, on the one hand, access to substances uh, from which would come from outside mm -hmm. of Macau on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, any um, uh, new problems such as uh, um, alcoholism uh, mm -hmm. getting more prevalent in, in, in the people that you that you serve? Mm -hmm. how, how was the situation? Well, in terms of the current drug users, there, of course, there was a, a, a change of path. As part of the people who are injecting heroin, they uh, they switch because it was too dormical. Uh, because uh, uh, heroin was very difficult to, to, to find in Macau, and the uh, current still is. is a, uh, I say a little bit is around 3,000 patakesh. So the most part of them, they switch for the Dormico, they're injecting Dormico. So that is the, 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 the main, uh, <coughs> the, the still the, the, the main um, drug use. Um, some our users, um, we have a most part of them, they, uh, they don't abuse alcohol unless they're already alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But once if you are a heroin user, normally you don't go to the to, to, to abuse uh, to, uh, I mean, to have these two addictions. Uh, of course, there are some cases, but normally you don't. But uh, then we have another case of the people using uh, uh, methamphetamine, basically the methamphetamine. So was, at that time, was still kind of uh, possible to find methamphetamine in some, certain uh, minorities uh, and still exist, but the price has been very high. So most part of the people, they start to, so actually we were thinking that we could have a lot of people coming to the center to get the rehab, but actually no. We have a reduce of people coming to the rehab. Many of them that are using these uh, methamphetamine, ketamine, or cocaine, because it's not a drug that give you the phys physical uh, dependency, so they can, uh, let's say, stop uh, from one day to another day. Uh, so, and the other one is the heroin users because the communities are very small. Most part they are in the center or in the prison or somewhere in China. So, I mean, we didn't have any increase. But I think that the, the most the, 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 and very important, it's, uh, and that is our, our, uh, our outreach department working, it's the, the injecting of Dormico because we are injecting uh, pills that they are hard to be dissolved, which is kind of create problems in the veins and then in the tissues, the skin. So we try to, to, to talk to them and to speak to them to at least to they don't, uh, uh, to at least they change the needles as, as much as, uh, for one inject and one needle. Um, before I, 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 uh, we, we, we move uh, the conversation uh, uh, on, I'd like you to uh, share with us something like when Fatima Santos Ferreira was, was talking about there was a need to train the staff, or mm -hmm. so the, the staff that you had to be, to address it, to be ready to face, to endure this situation. How, how, how did you address that in order to uh, keep the morale high of the people working with you and, uh, and, and this adjustment in, in, in mm -hmm. under, under the pandemic situation, especially in the first few months? Uh, actually, I mean, 
I think I have a very great staff. They are, our work inside of the centers in all the parties is very intense, that we don't have much time to, to worry about many other things. But um, uh, the important is that we always keep meetings uh, daily or, or almost every two days, so we, so we arrange all the challenges and face all the situations. Uh, there are some problems when the, when the, when the open the first time they open, right, after two or three months, they open some people that they were living in China, they already, already could come to Macau. So we have some staff that they were living in China. So that was a moment of a, a little bit uh, tense between the staff when they knew some of the staff they were coming every day from China to Macau. And uh, so that was a little bit, uh, how are we going to do this? Because some staff, they are not very happy about that. Uh, and and um, but then the, the, the staff itself, they were living in China, they, are, they also, without we speak to them, they realized that they were some kind of t nervous over there in, in, the, in the office. So they moved to, they start to live in, in Macau, so release the, the, the stress from the, from, the other, from the other staff. We didn't make any, uh, any uh, uh, staff training, uh, we didn't make any staff training, but uh, we, did have, we have time to take care of our own house, Make more cleanings to keep mm -hmm. the sinks, mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, re and to finish some of the some of the work that we uh, about the therapy that we need to, mm -hmm. to, to finish to and to the activities and plannings. Yes. Thank you, August. Thank uh, you. Fatima, manpower issues and support from government, and I could see that a number there was a, a wave of solidarity. Uh, uh, a number of organizations and people who uh, have been giving, lending support to Fu Hong Society. Uh, tell us about these uh, uh, issues that uh, you, you had to manage and deal with over the, over the year. Do you have enough, <coughs> enough, no. uh, enough manpower or, or uh, any, any We're issues? We're also yeah. facing yeah. Some, some staff that is living exactly, yeah. In, yeah. in China. Yeah. But before uh, they stop the coming mm -hmm. to Macau. We organize them to stay in Macau. We have uh, rent some space for them to, to stay, and stay in the center because we have no service user in the center. So f the way that they can continue to be in Macau, not going in back, the, because the worry everybody is that you're going you're coming back you can bring virus yeah. mm -hmm. so that's something that we would like to to all the staff to feel safe and don't have this kind of situation so at that time we have to get some apartments in macau to uh, let our staff to stay there mm -hmm. that is something that we did face the situation one period of time, because okay. since February, all our centers was closed. <coughs> Reopened after six months, but not totally. Only last year, end of the last mm -hmm. year, was 100%. And uh, there was needed the staff to go to, to, to visit. But those group that's going to visit uh, domiciliary visit mm -hmm. is social workers. The other staff remains in the center because the center need to continue to be cleaning and all this kind of situation. Well, sometimes we also feel some lack of support from the government. That is honestly telling. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And that's the period that we really, once more, sometimes not even guidelines to do, mm -hmm. but what to do. We have to think ourselves what we can do uh, in, in this kind of situation. But sometimes it's something that it is needed, some guidelines from the government. Not only telling, you cannot have uh, uh, people in the center, you cannot have many people together, you can, not only this, no, but telling us also, uh, because it's a, a new situation for everybody. It's not only for us. I understand that also a new situation for the government. 
But, so we should have a possibility to work together. And facing this kind of situation, you know, uh, uh, some and after reopen the centers, we have a new service that is uh, established for phases the number of service user to increase and the number of staff to increase. The example that you cannot tell, tomorrow you increase service user and today we have staff. No, we have to have staff three months before for training because they need to do what they do on this kind of situation because not everybody knows how to work with the uh, people with disability. Not everybody knows how to uh, see people autists. Because sometimes the autists, they, they don't look to you because they, 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 there is their handicap. And not everybody knows the situation like this. So we need to have time to train the staff. And this is something that the, 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 the government don't understand. So we need to, we have been asking, having meetings and all with them to, to change a little the situation. Do you see any uh, yes, signs a little, of improvement? Yes, a little, a little, but mm -hmm. not as much as we uh, like. Of course, of course. No? Yes, there has been change a little, but not as much as, as we like. Probably we want the best. Of course. And, and, uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Fatima. Elvo, we were not ready for this and actually, uh, uh, whoever says that they saw it coming, well, it's not was not possible to truly see it coming uh, the, with the, this scale. Of course, uh, Augusto was uh, well. On the one, 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 one thing is true because we uh, we I mean many of us uh, been through SARS. It maybe a year ago we had the impression that this would be SARS uh, 2.0, but not too different. Uh, but is is way is, is is something else, of course, uh, definitely. The fact that we were not ready, you you were uh, highlighting the uh, challenges uh, uh, facing people already with pre-existing conditions. Uh, the other citizens and people who have no pre-existing conditions, what kind of um, symptoms or did you see anything developing um, in uh, what? What's the pattern in people who had no pre-existing conditions, but uh, because of the uh, of the stress and the overall situation, ended up developing some sorts of uh, of, a, of a number of problems and issues? Yeah, uh, it's actually very interesting that you mentioned SARS because yeah. uh, uh, in a lot of the literature they actually refer to the SARS period yeah. when they compare the mental health situation yeah. now and back then. And of course, SARS, it actually ended in quite a short period of time co compared to COVID. But SARS at that time was uh, strong enough to create a mm -hmm. uh, very uh, increased demand for mental health services mm -hmm. and people with uh, mental uh, situations, okay, including increased mm -hmm. cases of suicide. Yeah? So uh, uh, learning from that, mm -hmm. we can certainly anticipate and uh, increase uh, number of cases, okay, uh, in all kinds of uh, mental health disorders. Uh, uh, different people are affected differently. I mentioned about the uh, group of people who have pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. but even the general population, we are affected, right? Uh, for example, um, families. How many of us has actually like uh, spent like uh, uh, three weeks, you know, inside the same house with the same family without like uh, uh, going out of the house? in that very cramped environment, for many of us, it's very hard. You don't have your own space, right? The routine that you're used to are not there. And parents are struggling, children are struggling, right? And then there will be a confrontation and conflicts. That is a very, uh, a very significant issue, especially during like the, the time you know, when we were basically locked down in Macau. Uh, right now, the society as a whole, we are slowly resuming to the new normal, but there are people who are uh, struggling financially. Lots of incomes, lots of jobs. Uh, college students 
a year ago, they would be expecting when I graduate, I will be having quite a decent job. Mm -hmm. And this year, certainly a very difficult time. And the coming year, it's going to be difficult as well. So uh, there are a lot, a lot of uh, different groups of people affected by this pandemic. And depending on the level of impact that they have, uh, will uh, increase their level of stress. And some might turn into depression, some might turn into anxiety disorders, and uh, some might, uh, you know, ended up, you know, uh, trying to take their own life as well. So uh, it is a very serious matter, and uh, we do uh, observe more serious cases in the society, you know, over the past few months. Uh, everybody, we, mm -hmm. we, we, we learn about that. So I think we uh, need a couple of things. Number one, we certainly need more resources to support those who are affected psychologically, okay? So uh, basically more counseling services, right? But at the same time, we also need more services to promote mental wellness. So people know about the warning signs, people know about uh, how to connect with other people and support each other, and uh, when and where to get help when needed. So um, as a society as a whole, we need to be gearing those uh, two directions. You know, if we want to uh, curb the psychological impact as well as we curb the virus. Thank you, thank you, Elvo. Uh, I would now uh, like to uh, share the floor with our, with the audience here, um, um, and I would start by João, uh, president of the Rotary Club in Macau. The Rotary Club um, has been uh, uh, over the year um, uh, has been organizing and carrying out a number of initiatives. And, uh, and I know that you do prioritize issues related to health, and, and by um, having a, a, a focus on, on mental health, you, you do highlight this, this issue. Would you like to share with us uh, some remarks and perhaps to uh, uh, add something to the conversation and a question to the, to the panel? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so as, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, one of the focus area of uh, Rotary is indeed health, and. Uh, Mental health is uh, is um, is part of it. Um, the projects and and earlier I, I forgot to mention one of the projects which was a substantial donation to hospital to Rotary clubs in Bergamo in Italy uh, at the peak of the outbreak in Italy in May, uh, which uh, we also made a substantial donation of uh, uh, money for them to uh, equip hospitals and uh, and um, help at, at a time in Italy where hospitals were actually doing <laughs> war medicine. They were yeah. choosing who to survive, who to save, and who to let go. So, um, uh, and the, the, we, the Rotary Club of Macau, we are in, in uh, District 3450, which comprises of uh, Macau, Hong Kong, and Mongolia. And uh, over this last uh, year, um, fighting the pandemic, helping people has been uh, uh, has been in the mind of all the clubs, and and it really has been a, a driving force. Um, it's not been easy for us because we are uh, struggling with the lack of funds, which is something I think all institutions that dedicate itself to humanitarian and social services are facing nowadays. We were particularly affected because. Um, um, on the moment we were supposed to, to do our major fundraising, that was the peak of the pandemic in Macau, and we were unable to, to, to actually do our fundraising. Um, but I, I have to share something which really um, uh, left me very, very uh, happy, uh, um, which was we made a call to all Rotarians to come forward and contribute. We were not able to raise funds from the civil society, we raised funds among ourselves. And everybody uh, said yes, and uh, and actually we had uh, we found the resources to move um, throughout this very very difficult year, um, and uh, and uh, and look uh, to the future with a, a slightly better uh, perspective. So uh, th this is something that uh, that I would like to highlight, and uh, and it's also a tribute to our fellow Rotarians, my fellow Rotarians. Um, we, uh, one of our mottos is service above self. And I think this year, most of us, many of us, if not all of us, we, uh, we did good on that, uh, on that motto. We, we, we did service to the community uh, above ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, João. That shows that uh, we've been seeing 
also the best of, of, of us, of, of mankind, uh, of, uh, in terms of humanity and humanism over this year, in addition to some other features by not be so laudable, but, but, I, but I would say that what is to highlight is the many, what you are sharing with us. Many in Macau, we've been, we've been witnessing organizations, individuals, companies, uh, embracing a certain, a uh, 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 embracing social responsibility in, in a way that is truly, is truly encouraging. Uh, I would like uh, to um, uh, ask uh, 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 the audience to uh, jump in, to join the conversation with remarks, uh, with questions, with something that you, perhaps you may also have something inspiring to share with us. Um, if uh, someone may want to, um, yes, <laughs> you want to, please, <laughs> please go ahead. <coughs> yes. Yes, uh, just uh, like uh, to share a little bit uh, about uh, the, the about the fundraising. Mm -hmm. Yes, because last year we cannot do uh, the normal flex selling uh, in the street um, uh, around. Usually, uh, before the COVID, we will have uh, lots of volunteers to have the uh, on the street to sell to, to have the flex selling, and uh, last year we can we, we can't. So we think all 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 the methods we can do still uh, for the enough money to do our service. So we just think of the QR code. Um, we, okay. we, uh, we have uh, applied for the, from the MPay, the uh, BOC, and also different uh, bank, and then we uh, obtain four QR code. And then I think uh, one, of, one of the QR code you should have inside your phone, mm -hmm. I think. I think. And maybe later on I will pass one <laughs> to each <laughs> each of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You you can uh, ignore the place, uh, ignore the time, ignore uh, uh, anywhere you are, and you can just uh, very very simple action. Then you can have the fun race. Yes, this is one of our, our thank you. new method. New method. Thank you very much, and yes. it's pretty much in line with the huh? uh, we are we're actually one of the. Uh, one of the outcomes of this pandemic has been, um, well, this has been a sort of accelerator of history in terms of technology, of uh, the way we deal yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. electronic payments, with uh, uh, virtual meetings, and, uh, and actually uh, also uh, the way for uh, stronger bonds and solidarity. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting, uh, thank you for, for sharing that and with also, us. Maybe Please go ahead. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, just uh, one promotion. Mm. Yes, because uh, just like this method, we will have another fundraise for tomorrow. Uh, not exactly tomorrow, but we will try our first time to have the um, in our Facebook fan page. We have a KOL from our autism guy, uh, one of our uh, live fans. Yes. Uh -huh. the the autism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Worker. Yeah, uh, tomorrow at 11, <laughs> at 11 a.m., mm -hmm. we will have a live, uh, live feed on the face, uh, Facebook fan page, uh, Fu Hong Macau. You can search Fu Hong Macau, and then you can have a like to him, and because uh, he will uh, have a live show uh, to uh, introduce all the different, uh, uh, the new new products for the uh, uh, Chinese New Year. Yeah. We will uh, also use this, me this <coughs> kind of method to, uh, instead of uh, uh, just like the normal uh, situation mm -hmm. before the COVID. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, so Fu Hong Macau, Fu Hong Society Macau on Facebook. Yeah, People yeah. may you follow can search, or... You, you can surf mm. in Chinese character, or in Fu Hong Wei, or in yes. the English, uh, Fu Hong Macau, yeah. F-U-H-O-N-G-M-A-C-A-U. Yes, that's... 11 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, yes, thank and, you. Yes, so, and that will be surely something that will occur. Fatima, please. Yeah, this young fellow, mm. he is with Fu Hong since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And he's an artist. He was a service user. Now he's a worker of our social enterprise yes. laundry. Yes the, yes, the one you launched so, a few yes, years he, ago. So he, he, you can see from him the development that he has doing around those years. Mm. And one of the things 
I'm sure the one of the things that did help him was the music. Ah. Mm -hmm. Because he belongs to uh, our band. We mm -hmm. have a, a band, live band. And he is the manager, you can say, of the, the group. And now, tomorrow, if you have time and see, you will see the difference that he has been facing around. The, and Cynthia can, can testify. First time <laughs> that she talked with him, he did not face her, just give the back to her to talk. And now he is able to go to Facebook and talk to the community. Thank you. Uh, so, Elvo, um, so we can see here, like, let's uh, now like, uh, try and see the forest through the trees and, and look at things in a more holistic way, which is um, uh, there are, and actually I would say in Macau, a number of silver linings in terms of us as a society, right? So uh, tell, tell, tell us about like, your take on who we are as a society today, one year after. Um, the uh, the first case uh, of COVID-19, and of course, how we regard ourselves in the global context, which is extremely complex and challenging, and all of us, uh, we, we, we are so worried about what goes on uh, elsewhere. Right, uh, so I think this year um, we have learned uh, about what it means to be a Macau resident, okay? Uh, I, I, I have a few uh, observations. Number one, our government has done an excellent job and everybody would agree with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that actually <laughs> helps and will help the government's uh, governance uh, along the way in the future. And I think that helps the society as a whole. Yeah, that's number one. Uh, number two, it shows the, uh, in general, there are some, some like uh, minor hiccups, but in general, it shows the uh, solidarity of the Macau citizens. For example, we are all wearing masks today, right? But that is not an order. It's just a uh, habit, just a uh, cooperation of uh, everybody trying to keep our, ourselves safe, right? Even though we know it's very safe, and perhaps at, at some point we feel like the mask may not be really that necessary, <laughs> but we still do it, right? Uh, that shows like uh, we, uh, all, 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 all of our Macau citizens are very committed in keeping our safe place, yeah. And, um, and of course, uh, during these times, uh, I think we have learned to give uh, gratitude, okay? We feel very proud to be a Macau resident because the way that we have handled the pandemic you know, I, it's my observation that for a very long time, uh, Macau people see Macau as a very small place. We don't even have a dot on the map, right? But now we, we are placed globally as a... Um, as a reference. As, as a, a reference, a, yes, a, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's not just about like the money, the casinos, right? It is how we handle the pandemic where the, the most civilized countries that we always look up to fell desperately. And we made it here. So I think that actually enhances the uh, self-esteem of the Macau citizen. So, so like, uh, even though uh, there are a group of people who are affected uh, seriously and they do need the extra help, but on the most part, I think uh, uh, for the Macau as a whole, uh, we are rising above it. And then uh, I, I, I do think after this pandemic, uh, Macau would uh, go on with a uh, next stage of development that uh, we can try uh, many other things that we did not have confidence in before. This highlights the, this concept of public good and, uh, and a sense of, uh, of community. Yes. Public good, health, public health is obviously a public good. Um, and interdependence. Of course, this is something that, well, may seem obvious, but uh, when we go through a crisis like this, it's so clear the depth and level of interdependence in our, in our society. So looking ahead, you were kind of hinting at that, and this is for a, for a wrap-up of our talk. Uh, looking ahead, uh, well, how would you like to see us in one year time? I guess <laughs> we, would share, we would share your, your <gasps> wish, right? But let's look, uh, let's look ahead. Uh, what is your final take on where we're heading um, collectively, Macau, and also 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we may expect in the coming year. Right. Uh, I think uh, what we should expect is to expect the unexpected. Yeah, I think um, uh, over the past years, you know, all the things that we hoping would happen may not have happened, right? And uh, things where we hope it would not happen has happened, right? So I think dealing with uh, uncertainty is something that we need to be uh, totally uh, be prepared for. We hope for the best, but at the same time, I think we should uh, prepare for the worst. Uh, so that's number one, uh, expect the unexpected. And number two, um, that's uh, what I've been sharing uh, in whatever occasions that I can. Turn the lemon into lemonade. Yeah? There are many times that we feel like our life is very much struggling. Okay? Uh, so, for, so for example, many people complain about uh, while they are being uh, confined in their houses. Right? They complain about it. But think about it. When was the last time that you can have like a three weeks of no other obligation except to yourself, right? So how about cleaning up your, your, your house? How about like a tidying up your, your uh, files, uh, writing up your essay? You know, <laughs> there, there, there are so many things that you could have done, right? So we, we, we really should like uh, look at things from a more positive perspective whenever possible. I know it would not be that easy, but I do think that uh, we can make the uh, lemonade out of the lemon. And finally, uh, that would be my uh, final sharing, is that uh, uh, throughout this year, uh, two things are very important to keep our mental health uh, uh, in good shape. Number one, take good care of ourselves. Self-care, perhaps at this time, is the most important thing or the most meaningful thing that we could help ourselves and help the society. And number two, uh, stay connected with uh, people, especially people in need. I, I remember the time where, uh, when we were pretty much the uh, lockdown, uh, there was a, a lot of talk about, okay, reaching out to people. And right now, when many of us are uh, basically going back to our normal life, we got busy again, right? We could have a certain group of people left out, you know? So I, 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 I thank uh, Fu Hong, I thank ALTM, okay, in their work, uh, continue to reach out to the people in need, and uh, let's uh, us all uh, do our part as well. Thank you, Alvo. Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, indeed. Uh, we can find some good lemonade at uh, Fu Hong Society, right? And not only lemonade, also some good food, uh, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Fatima. <laughs> okay. What What is your? We, we, how do you see the what comes? Uh, what lies ahead? Uh, what is the oh. key message that you want you know uh, to convey here? People, feel positive. Don't just think. Uh, the uh, pandemic, one more case, now yeah. people say, oh yeah, one more case. Yeah. No, too positive. Don't panic, yes. Don't panic. Yes. And, and try to relax, because take it easy and stay healthy. Stay healthy, don't panic, yeah. be positive, yeah. right? Augusto. I guess you would <laughs> agree with, yeah, uh, with yeah, Alvo and Fatima, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, while looking ahead, both or either from the perspective of ARTM or uh, the community, um, uh, how do you see what's coming next and uh, how should we how should we do it? And by the way, can I find lemonade at, uh, at your association? Yeah, yeah, you can find that. <laughs> and cappuccino. Yes. <laughs> I prefer without cheese. Yeah, 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 yeah. oh, we also have it. Uh, actually, I think this, uh, this moment is a reflection moment uh, for all the humanity. Uh, that and we can see that uh, such a, a virus invisible to our eye uh, was able to change our way of living, our mobilization, uh, our way of thinking, and even our way of caring to each other. And um, and uh, and then so I think we should praise more our life and uh, should care more about the persons next to us. And uh, stop judging the people, stopping in view the people, stopping the wars and all that uh, uh, negative things in the world. Because as we can see, just a small virus was able to make a lot of damage in the in humanity. And uh, and we don't know we don't know what uh, Mother Nature can reserve for us in, in the future. So I think we should. Uh, it's to respect ourselves and respect our humankind, and uh, I think to be more happily uh, living. 
Uh, for RTM, I think it's just, uh, just that. We will continue. Drag will not stop, unfortunately. So we need just to continue at, um, helping those ones that, will, that ask for help, uh, preventing those ones to try to for the, have the, the first experience. And um, also other problems like alcohol, etc. So these, will not, these problems will not stop. So what we need to do is just continue helping, preventing, and, uh, and, be, uh, and uh, hopefully that the people start to see. And that comes to the funding because uh, I was thinking uh, in, the, in the photo that uh, Fatima put, and uh, all the talking, uh, and there uh, was a time that uh, the, 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 all these uh, casinos, etc., they start to donate money, right? They start to give, uh, they come, we could see in the newspaper, and we could see in the Facebook, uh, this hotel gave this amount for the masks to this association, this association, and I start to read all the association, but oh, nobody from the regs. <laughs> so, and then I, I just call some of them, hey, how about us? Mm -hmm. Well, drug, the people on drugs, also, we also need it, right? We also deserve that. So I, I think is that is more understanding for the, the, for the people that are recover on drugs, for the people that are on drugs, because they are vulnerable people. They also need to, they already, besides the COVID, they need to face a lot of family situations and the court situations and fairness uh, when they are sending to the prison because of just consumption. So they, they face a lot of issues. And, um, and they should be also uh, having attention of the society and not feeling the discrimination because it's already very difficult for them to find jobs because if they have some criminal record, they cannot find job in any uh, main employers of Macau, the, the casinos there in the, <coughs> the entertainment industry and also the government. So they already need to face a lot of situations. So, and discrimination is something that I think nobody likes to, to face. And that's, I think, is for that, is to fight against the, the stigma and the discrimination. Thank you, August. So Thank here you. we have, um, I guess, a clear message uh, for a wrap-up. Care is, uh, is yes. take center stage here. And I'd like to thank you so much, Thank you. To my fellow distinguished speakers, Augusto Nogueira, Fátima Santos Ferreira, El Vosso. Thank you very much, João Francisco Pinto and the Rotary Club of Macau. Dr. Rui Cunha and the Foundation and the whole team and all of you who joined us. We hope that uh, with this uh, we uh, uh, were able and I believe uh, uh, to uh, learn a bit more about ourselves and about the community so we can have this important and positive message as we move forward uh, uh, and as we uh, will be uh, surely able together to weather the storms and uh, we can see, as I said, a number of silver linings and surely uh, what lies ahead uh, will be uh, surely a situation where um, we as a society will um, have a sense of having grown up. And let's hope, and this is really important, the word of solidarity with all of those around the world who are struggling, who are suffering. Uh, uh, we hope that in the coming months the situation will improve greatly with the vaccine and also with a number of coordinated measures. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>